Well, hello everybody, and uh, this is just a quick intro before the real intro. Um, you just saw a little uh, scene from Passchendaele, it was a movie that was shot uh, just around Calgary about, uh, I guess about 10 years ago. Um, I was actually asked to be in it as a as a, an extra, a uh, featured extra, but um, my principal wouldn't let me go shoot, so ah, uh, what can you do? Um, uh, uh, the guy who produced the movie, uh, his daughter was actually in my social studies class, or had been a couple years previously, so uh, he was uh, hoping to get me on set um, because of my love for history and, uh, yeah, also getting into the film and TV industry a bit, so. Um, I finished off, though, with uh, just a shot of the the boy um, in there, and uh, that always got me thinking. Um, the scene comes from the last uh, bit of the war, of course, and Germany is pulling everybody into the line. Um, and I just, uh, we just had Canada Day uh, recently, and, you know, Canada definitely has its problems. Um, but, uh, you know, Canada, America, Britain, you know, most, most of what we would consider to be the West, which is a might be a, an egregious uh, mistake these days, considering how interconnected the world is. Uh, but it really makes me think about how fortunate I am to have been born when I was and where I was. And uh, as as we go forward uh, this summer, and maybe you're watching this after summer, I don't know, maybe heading into Remembrance Day, um, just uh, take a moment to really just pause and consider uh, how different life could be if we were uh, not blessed to be living in such an age and at such a time uh, and place uh, as many of us are. Um, and so, yeah, you know, hate to, uh, hate to ever see someone's child like that heading off to war. And we know what happens. We know what happens, but um, we're just, uh, we're fortunate that it's uh, hopefully anyway becoming less and less frequent and uh, people are, you know, governments and whatnot are hopefully uh, have learned from the past and are are learning to uh, to kind of get along, swallow a little pride every now and again if it means uh, people can sleep safe in their beds. But uh, yeah, I'm going to be playing a game of uh, uh, Axis and Allies in 1914 here in just a moment. So I hope you enjoy the film or the, the film. Well, the YouTube video. And uh, hey, just be. Uh, just be a little reflective uh, about uh, all the great things we have, and uh, remember that uh, it's uh, we don't enjoy them by accident, not a fluke. Uh, many people had to suffer, many people had to die uh, to get to where we are uh, these days. And so when people are marching in the streets whining about, uh, oh, you name it, there's a laundry list of things people whine about these days. You know, I, I, I shake my head at one point, you know, saying, you know, you have no idea how good you've got it. But at the same point, I'm thankful that they can do that without being arrested or shot at by their own government, because that wouldn't be a good way to live either. So I think uh, I think we're doing pretty well. Uh, we definitely have a ways to go. And, I, and uh, you know, we hope, you know, there's a, uh, some sort of a way to bring about uh, a utopian society. But I don't think it's going to happen because people be people. Um, but, uh, I think we're, I think we're all wanting it and, uh, and knowing that, uh, if we keep watching scenes like you just watched and if we keep looking at, uh, at the, the films and we, and we listen to those who have fought and, uh, keep reviewing, uh, all the, the notes from history, I think we can avoid such things in the future. So anyway, uh, it's enough gabbing by me and on with the game. Well, hello everybody and welcome back to the Hilltop Pillbox here in Absurd, British Columbia, Canada. And as you can see, today we're going to have a game of the Axis and Allies World War I 1914 version. And uh, we're all set up here and raring to go. And we will be playing with the Russian Revolution rule. And uh, we're not going to be playing with the economic or political collapse rules though. So... A little good news, bad news for the Central Powers. We'll see how they respond to that. Uh, but right off the hop here, we can see that Austria-Hungary is ready to go. 
And uh, they're ready to invade good old Serbia here, who's done nothing to nobody. And they're going to get invaded here. Uh, fun fact, though, is the Serbians actually held off the Austro-Hungarians for quite some time. And uh, dealt them a number of humiliating defeats. Um, didn't last, though, because as soon as Russia got in, then Germany got involved. And that just uh, made the war a little bit too big for the Serbian economy. And uh, eventually they had to say uncle, as it were. But we're going to have some interesting moves here today. We've got some uh, talk of perhaps a German attempt to blockade the British Isles. And uh, we'll see how that goes. Of course, Britain always likes to utilize India to crank out some units. And uh, the limit, of course, is four units. Sometimes we uh, play uh, that the limit is uh, whatever you want to build there. Usually spells doom for the Ottomans. So we'll probably keep it at the limit of four. Um, and we'll see how that goes. But uh, Africa here, Germany's just going to try to make a royal nuisance of herself until uh, those four units, five units get wiped out and, uh, and the rest of the war can carry on as it does. Alright folks, we'll let you know how round one goes right after this. Alright, we are done round one and it is a very uh, interesting round. We're gonna start with the Austro-Hungarians here who did what they do and took Serbia and uh, had a very good opening round in Venice. Uh, good enough to uh, uh, remain contested but it's not uh, quite over yet. Also uh, they moved everybody over here to Galicia so it looks like they're, they've got a Russia first strategy here. Uh, the Russians pulled back from Poland knowing that they'd not hold with their troops and not wanting to get trapped between two massive armies there. So they brought back their guys and stocked up some in the Ukraine here. It'll be interesting to see if they can hold on as the uh, Austro-Hungarians are bringing quite the force in there. But the Russians built a fighter here, uh, hoping to maybe get some superiority. They grabbed Romania, of course, the freebie there. And they also lost Sevastopol to the crazy Turks coming down there. But you'll notice the Black Sea is devoid of any ships because the Russians did a very Russian thing and just charged and the two cruisers attacked each other. And uh, inevitably uh, everything was killed. So there are no ships in the Black Sea at this moment which opens the door perhaps to some uh, transport building. Uh, we'll see if those players feel like doing that. Over here uh, we have some builds by Britain, uh, moving into Persia, of course, and the Turks trying to counter that. The British also brought their men over from Anglo-Egypt, Sudan, to land in Arabia, have a small force there, and just left Egypt well enough alone. In Africa, the uh, Germans did what the Germans do, kind of spread around a bit, um, and... The British attacked them in Angola, and they each lost a unit, but the Germans had to lose the artillery, of course. As you know, artillery cannot be on its own in a territory, it must have supporting infantry. And uh, so therefore they had to lose an artillery uh, there. So Germany is down to uh, four infantry in Africa, and uh, I don't think they'll be around much longer. The French are coming over in force to help out. The French also took Portugal gained uh, some much needed help there and they have a couple transports to move uh, the bulk of the troops up here where we see the Germans were very successful in their attack. They only lost a sub and damaged the battleship and uh, they sank the British fleet. Uh, so the British built a cruiser here um, possibly hoping to goad the Germans into coming to attack again here and maybe the mines will get luckier this time and also within range of the French battleships. Uh, one got damaged, they fought a uh, submarine, but the sub got one shot off before it was sunk. Uh, the Western Front, which is always very entertaining, is uh, there are no contested territories on the Western Front. Uh, the Germans did head into uh, Lorraine uh, here, but uh, the French uh, on the very first round got like five or six hits. And so they were able to take it back with their troops from Burgundy. Uh, Picardy is uh, 
pretty bulked up there and the French build of eight men is in Paris. The Germans did split their forces heading east and west but they only sent six men to Russia and the rest are headed off to France. Now remember we are playing with the Russian Revolution rule and I've also been asked to clarify this rule here. Out of box uh, Britain can place any number of builds in India. Um, I know some edits to the rules have said you got to limit that to four, maybe five um, units because if this happens, Britain is effectively out of the game unless you can build a decent army down in India because they'll be unable to uh, to do much for the first uh, two or three rounds and uh, that will pretty much give Germany the game. If you can't get British troops on the soil here, they they just can't compete with uh, Germany's economy. Speaking of economy, let's head over here to the high-tech whiteboard and uh, we can see what the uh, different axis, uh, or sorry, central powers and uh, Entente have. Now, uh, I did not total them up, so I'm going to do that right now. So 22 is 48. Uh, that is 81. That is 95. That is 115. So that's got to go up to and over here we've got 94 so that's gone up quite a bit okay so 115 and 94 we're gonna doctor up the board and then we're gonna get on to round two here of our Axis and Allies 1914 game and we'll see if the Ottoman can hold off the Brits we'll see if the French can survive long enough to get the British Empire shipping some stuff over to them we'll see in just a moment all right, at the end of round two, let's see what we see. Well, we're going to start up here with the good old U.S. of A. Finally built something because they were waiting to see what happened with the German fleet. And so they built five transports and a couple of artillery and uh, still can't come over. But at the end of uh, round three, there'll be a couple more boats there and some more units to come on over to Europe. And as you can see, the German high seas fleet is gone. Uh, they did take out a British cruiser and then took out a damaged uh, French battleship. Uh, but after that, that was all they could do. And they are now gone. The U-boats are all gone out of the Atlantic. Okay. We'll swing down to Africa here. And in Africa, the French continue to uh, come across here. The Germans were destroyed by a couple of French infantry landing in Cameroon and the Germans were also kicked out of Angola. But the Germans are making a uh, Bavarian nuisance of themselves here by taking more UK territory, but uh, there's not a lot to go against them and they don't really have anywhere to go now. So they might uh, spread out a little bit or what have you, but with these French troops and being fairly mobile with the transport, could be scary stuff. Over here, the Ottomans have uh, Got a little bit of a lease on life here. This attack here by the British came in and the British brought in um, 11 units including the fighter and the Turks had 10 units. And the Turks got 8 hits and the British actually got 9 hits as you can see. So it was a major bloodbath uh, which actually helps out the Turks because uh, the Brits had to build transports uh, up in, uh, as we remember, up here because the German fleet is gone. So they had to spend a lot of their money on transports over there. And they only had nine bucks left. So they just built three guys here in India. And they moved the transports over here. So the, the teeth have gone out of the British lion here. We'll have to see if they're going to be able to do much more. Transjordan did not go well for the Brits. And uh, on the return punch, they really got clobbered. There's still one guy left, but... Uh, Good chance without some help here, uh, Africa might be in danger from a, a Turkish horde coming down. Uh, Smyrna, though, was gobbled up by the uh, attentive Italians who uh, saw an opportunity and decided to take it. Uh, won't really stop the flow of Turkish troops, but they'll have uh, a, a minor pause on their way through. Uh, over here on the eastern front, we have the Austro-Hungarians going in here to Romania with a whole bunch of guys. They really took it on the chin though, but uh, they, they still came out uh, on top with a lot of stuff left over, including a fighter. Uh, Albania, they went into, weren't able to kill all the Italians, but uh, there are still 
There's still another round of combat to go on there. We'll, it'll probably be over this round. Austro-Hungarians decided to hold up in Galicia because of the Russian horde here. And the Russians did not uh, prosecute a, uh, a battle here. Um, they stayed back to play a little defense knowing that the Austro-Hungarians have quite a bit in reserve here. So kind of, uh, we'll, we'll see if Ukraine is going to be a major major battle front the next round. Up in Poland, the Russians slammed into the big German uh, force here, destroyed 15 units, uh, but then lost a dozen of their own. So and knowing the German economy is much stronger, um, the Russians need to be wary of that. Um, let's see here. Germans stacking up on infantry. Looks like they might have a bit of a defensive posture for one of their fronts while they mop up the other one. And on the western front here, I may have called it the eastern front in the first round. Somebody told me I may have, so. But hey, this is the western front as we know. All is not quiet as Lorraine continues to be fought over. And uh, with the imminent arrival of eight British units, the Germans now have to be careful about their flanks as the uh, the British would certainly be able to uh, kind of land in Kiel. That would really uh, not be fun for the Germans. Uh, of course, if the mines are lucky, you might be losing stuff you can't afford to replace right now. The Italians uh, killed all but one of the Austro-Hungarians here and uh, just built their, their four men and, uh, of course, did their little sneaky move down here to Turkey. Uh, that is... Pretty much everything, I think. So round three, we might see a little bit more going on in Africa. Definitely going to be some major changes in the Middle East here. There's just not enough going on for uh, the Turks to be worried about anything. And uh, we'll see what happens here on this Eastern Front during round three of 1914. And just a quick look at the board here. We'll see how things are going. So the Russians are uh, down a little bit. The French are up. The British are up. The Italians are up. And America is America. So they're totally up uh, one buck here from their uh, previous round. The Central Powers, on the other hand, are down a little bit. So they're down 12 bucks. A lot of that came from the Germans uh, being in contested territories in Poland and Lorraine. And also, of course, the Ottomans, who have really had a really bad round that way. But I'm pretty sure that number is going to skyrocket here on turn three. So right now it's 116 to 82. And we'll see how that pans out right after this. Yes, round three is in the books. And let's see what's going on here in Africa. Well, the Germans continue to be annoying, but they're down to two guys now, and they've lost all of their original territories here and uh, are about to lose uh, Rhodesia on the next round and will well they might hold on it is tough to kill infantry with infantry and considering they can't uh, bring everybody together for this Germans could hold on for a while we shall see over here in the Middle East the Ottoman were able to oust the British presence in Transjordan I know it's not uh, Gallipoli it's a little too far south for that but pretty much how it went and so the Brits are gone, and there's no Brits in Egypt. So the Ottoman may have an easy time of it, although the British do have some transports here. And they also have six freshly minted troops here. They also were able to push the Turks out of Mesopotamia. And the Turks, instead of coming back to attack, uh, decided to marshal their forces in Ankara. And I just noticed that the wrong chips were used for this here, so we'll have to change that out. On the turn, but they built five men because they only had fifteen dollars. That's dramatic music. We'll do a flyby over Russia. Anyway, cool. So you see what happened in Russia. Russia beat the last uh, few German troops and kicked the Austro-Hungarians out of Ukraine hardcore. Liberated Sevastopol. So this is all open here, and the once mighty Austro-Hungarian presence has been reduced. They have some reserves down here. That's getting really loud. I'm going to turn that down a bit. There we go. And right.
right, so, um, where were we? Yes, yeah, so the Austro-Hungarians built here. Trying to head out here, but you can see the Italians have now taken care of the Austro-Hungarians that were in Vienna, causing them grief. So, things are not going well for the Central Powers here. However, up in Europe, in the northern part of Europe, uh, they are doing all right. They're, uh, they're cruising along here, and there's not much in the way to, to stop them. Uh, the French have bulked up Paris, of course, as they typically do, but uh, Paris will probably get surrounded uh, if this keeps up. But we'll see. The Germans built uh, men artillery, and they're, all, they're also having to send stuff here to the, to the Russian front because, well, of course, the Russians are doing quite well. The Russians are healthy, and a healthy Russia is a bad idea for a bad problem, pardon me, for the Germans. Uh, not much else to show you there in Britain. I got their four transports and they were able to drop off eight infantry here. Kept the artillery at home for now. Uh, more of an offensive weapon than, than defensive, of course. So there you go. And uh, yeah, the French are ready to bring up their last Portuguese troop. And the Americans are chomping at the bits. They've had three rounds and now they're going to be able to head over. So we'll see how that goes on turn four here of 19... 14. And dang nabbit, I forgot to show you the uh, the good old board here. So the uh, Entente is uh, doing quite well, actually. When they have most of their guys above 20, uh, it kind of spells doom for the Central Powers, unless Central Powers get some amazing rolls. Central Powers did go up this round. They went up 7, but so did the Entente. So we're looking, uh, looking at a well, we'll see what happens. I mean, the economy is one thing and the board is another. And uh, I think having a, a Italy that is unimpeded at this point and, uh, and a, well, fairly healthy Russia. <laughs> they're not really under any duress right now. I think Austria-Hungary is going to have to try something drastic here. See if they can't uh, pull the CP's fat out of the fire. But we'll see. All right. See you in a moment. Alright, this is Hans Zimmer music from the movie Gladiator. It's called The Battle. And boy, there sure has been a bunch. Uh, Africa continues to stymie everybody's offensive dreams. But uh, I think the clock is, is running out on the Germans here. But we'll see what happens there. The British had to bring over four guys from India. And the Italians are scrambling north to help out. Uh, but the Turks have their own troubles because the Russians had come down and to support the British here in a defensive role, but uh, they may actually be quite offensive and move into empty Ankara as the Ottomans figured they'd make a stand here in the Syrian desert instead of dying piecemeal in two or three territories. They've bulked up the capital and have kept it bulked up, uh, worried about uh, the Russians because the Russians are now having free reign here in the south and... Uh, doesn't look like there's a lot that can stop them from doing what they want to do. The cheeky Italians took empty Albania, and so the Austro-Hungarians have to deal with that, but they also have to deal with this. Again, I said cheeky Italians, there's both cheeks right there. Uh, so they're, uh, they're causing grief. The uh, Austro-Hungarians did do a bit of a suicide attack into Poland last round, hoping to kill some Russians for the Germans. Uh, they only killed like five. Uh, so when the Germans attacked, the Russians still had a good amount of men and still have three units left over from that massive foray. Uh, the Russians built six men and an aircraft because everybody lost their, their planes uh, in that battle. Uh, up here, the Germans have gone long in tanks and artillery and men. So we'll see what happens with those, which way they're going to head, east or west. Over here, the British landing in Picardy has now moved up, and they uh, brought over some more, as you can see. And uh, the Germans actually did hit two units with their artillery. As you know, when you land where there's enemy artillery present, they get to shoot at you first. So uh, they lost a couple units that way. And they weren't able to dislodge the Germans totally, so they're kind of stuck there this round. Um, the Germans have uh, moved lock, stock, and smoking barrel into Lorraine, and they actually took Burgundy, which the French had to head out and take back. 
And uh, but the, the French are looking much better now. They've got uh, about 30 units in Paris, and it doesn't look like Paris is in any trouble. London is London, looking pretty peaceful. The Americans are here, and they'll be uh, within two here of landing anywhere between you know, Greece if they wanted to, or Albania to help out, or northern Italy, maybe Marseille. But there's uh, 12 units that can uh, have some fun. So the Central Powers, it looks like they are getting squeezed pretty hard here, and this time I'm going to remember to show you the board. And the economy continues to, to rise for the Triple Entente. And everybody now is 20 or more. And so that gives them a grand total of 131. Whereas the Central Powers economy is shrinking mightily. Uh, now some of these are, are fairly, uh, how do you say, uh, illusor, illusionary. I don't know if that's a word. Uh, but they're they're kind of soft numbers because they can take these back and they actually collected quite a bit more like the Austria Hungarians collected I think 36 or something last round and uh, Germany collected 42 or something right so things go back and forth the Ottomans I think are the only ones that collected about that much on the last round they didn't have any real change so they're down to 75 versus 131 and the music doesn't lie folks we're down to it now. So I think this might be the last round unless the CP pulls off some really, really good uh, attacks here. Uh, this might be it for their dream of a Central Powers Europe. We'll find out in a moment. All right. It is over, folks. Uh, round six proved to be rather telling. Uh, although, we have to have a shout out for the lone German infantryman who has survived the entire game. I don't think I've ever seen that before, but uh, there really wasn't a concerted effort to, to oust him. He, they kept attacking, I guess, but uh, he and his buddy fought them off. His buddy bought the big one last round, but uh, he's hung on and he's been able to take out all comers. So, good for him. Unfortunately, all that effort is for naught as the Central Powers have been pushed back to the brink. And we'll, we'll talk about it here. A little bit of arguing went on about whether or not Russia was going to fold anytime soon. Germans have about uh, 12 or 13 units right on the doorstep there. And uh, Russia does go first, though, remember. So they'll be able to push them off. I mean, after Austria-Hungary moves up. Um... But Russia has enough in reserve here. Plus Vienna is now under siege. The uh, Russians have a large stack there ready to come in of uh, artillery. And uh, the Italians even are in on the action here. And uh, have tied up some of the reinforcements for the Austro-Hungarians there. So things are not going well for Austria-Hungary. Uh, they are in fact down to $15. Now again... They could take Trieste back for four, or they could take Tyrolia back for four. Um, they probably couldn't take Budapest very easily, put a dent in it, but I don't know if they'd be able to keep it. And even then, all these Russians are going to move in and take Alicia, and uh, that'll that'll be it for them. They're just they're pretty weak right now. Uh, even the Americans are getting in on the action. They're able to take Greece, and they took it with one attack. Boom, done. And lost nothing to the uh, onshore artillery. So even the Americans are here getting ready to put pressure on Bulgaria, which will then in turn put some pressure on Constantinople. Of course, America is kind of a one and done. They do have a follow-up assault here of four units, and there will be four more coming next round. But it's, it's that trickle that uh, keeps these guys honest from sending too much stuff further afield. Uh, over here... The uh, great menace to the uh, Turks uh, has been fairly vanquished, um, except there's, you know, six tanks here ready to come in. And uh, with the pressure from the Russians up here, the Americans here, uh, and the Brits here, uh, and the fact that the Turks just simply cannot increase their uh, money very easily. They're, they're building five guys, maybe six guys a turn, that's it. Um, 
and uh, now that uh, well, let's let's take a look at to why this this game is being uh, folded by the central powers. Okay, so Ottoman doesn't look horrible here. They've been able to take care of the British and Russian threat, um, but up here Germany is in big trouble. The British have landed at Kiel and Holland. The French have a monstrous stack here. And uh, they're sitting there with over 30 units. That's just going to march and march and march. And there's going to be a steady stream of angry Frenchmen coming behind. Plus, they have the naval presence that they can drop guys off behind. Uh, the British can also head back and just keep dumping guys off. The mines might take out a ship here and there. Um, on average, one out of every six trips, uh, they'd lose a ship. Uh, so that was four trips there, and obviously they lost nothing. Um, but the Germans are being squeezed pretty hard, and they're not getting any help from Austria-Hungary. And for the Central Powers to win, they need to work together quite a bit. They had a little bit of uh, work that they did together here with the Germans and the Austro-Hungarians, but uh, it's just not enough. And now with Austria-Hungary getting crushed on all three fronts here, Vienna is under siege. Uh, there's a good chance they could lose Vienna if they are not careful to take care of all this stuff. Um, but France is no longer a concern, and so the uh, the Entente is going to be able to focus their efforts elsewhere. Britain will definitely be throwing tons of money into India and just keeping the pressure on the Ottomans to stop them from expanding outward. And even Italy, with its lone transport, can be annoying and start uh, gobbling up some Turkish uh, territories that aren't protected. So. I don't think it's a foregone conclusion. I don't think it's completely done. Um, but when you look at these numbers, that doesn't look very good. You got 143 bucks. That's what it stands at right now, and 60. So it's uh, two and a half to one. Uh, you know, and it's just it's not good. And it's not like the Entente doesn't have a lot of stuff on the board. Now they got a fair amount of junk here. Especially the French are very healthy. When you have a healthy France in this game, it's not good. But even with the Russian Revolution rule, uh, it hasn't uh, hasn't played out well for the uh, Central Powers. Um, they just can't uh, can't seem to get that last surge in. So uh, the Russians may actually come back to Moscow if we kept playing and uh, just then punch out really hard and crush whatever stack happens to be there. And meanwhile, the Germans have got to be worried about this. This is just a real growing concern for them. It's going to march up the coast. The British are going to keep landing on the coast. Uh, Germany is uh, is pretty spent. Uh, they're not going to be doing much in that sense. So, uh, Austria-Hungary again, trapped at home, having to protect their capital now. Okay, and also the same with Ottomans, are trapped at home, having to protect the capital. Not quite as horrible for them. Uh, but if the Russians took a real interest, they could come down here and cause some grief. Uh, just so you know, the Russians collected last turn, because they actually held Bulgaria and Ankara. Uh, they collected, I think, f 38 or something, so, yeah. But that's, uh, that's uh, all for not now. Everything is all done. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and remember, folks, to uh, hug your loved ones, make sure that you tell their friends that they're awesome and thank them for playing with you, especially if you uh, ever uh, give them a dirty beating in one of these games. Make sure you, you know, buy them lunch or something afterwards and uh, thank them a lot for playing and let's keep the community growing. Uh, appreciate all the, the subs on my channel here and there's a lot of great channels out there everybody needs to go see. Um, and uh, guys who, who definitely know a lot more about these games than I do. I just love playing. I don't, I don't study them as much as, uh, as others do, but I sure do enjoy playing them. Just get you out there with people having a great time. So until next time, everybody, like I say, hug your loved ones. Tell your friends that they're special. And may those dice be ever with you.